Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Looking forward to chatting with my boy. A new addition to Dusty Vision TV. Came across his Instagram channel not too long ago and had him on the show before and it was just a great vibe and i'm looking forward to having him consistently every thursday right here on dusty vision tv he's a self-proclaimed mob junkie ladies and gentlemen from underworld legends joe what up man what's going on dusty how you doing bro doing great man doing great really looking forward to chatting with this week and talking about some uh some more mob figures some underworld legends alcatraz is a place that I've always found fascinating. I One of my favorite places in the world is San Francisco. Me and my wife go there, you know, maybe, well, before the pandemic, we were there once, at least once a year. Um, oh, really? Really love it. And, you know, every other time I go, I have to do the Alcatraz tour. I've done it like seven times. It's it's corn really? or whatever, you know, but I still like it. I'm just no way. like that. And um, anyone who doesn't know, check out the history of Alcatraz. It's a very fascinating prison. People have tried to escape, and there's a bunch of stories behind that. But one of the stories going to discuss tonight is of the Choctaw Kid and I do remember hearing about this because they give you the uh, headphones to walk around the island and they tell you the stories as you're walking by you know certain parts of the island and things like that and I do remember hearing about this but I would love to go more in depth Um, talk to me about the Choctaw Kid the battle at Alcatraz and uh, what you know about this guy yeah Clarence Choctaw Kid Carnes one of the lesser known but legendary prisoners at Alcatraz probably spent one of the longest stints there out of anybody. I know for sure that when he got there, he was the youngest um, inmate ever at Alcatraz. And of course, he was involved in the uh, massacre that you mentioned. Um, But yeah, very fascinating character. He gets his nickname, of course. I believe he was, um, his family members are from a tribe in Oklahoma. Uh, I believe that's the Choctaw tribe, of course. And um, I'm going to just read a little bit of of my piece uh, from him, on him. Um, Just as a little bit of an overview of how he ended up at Alcatraz. And then I'll go into his later life. The 18-year-old Justy boarded a boat while handcuffed and shackled to another prisoner. He was at the rock as the youngest inmate to ever set foot on the island for America's most vicious criminals. As he walked toward the prison, he had no idea he would become acquainted, even friendly, with some of the most legendary villains in U.S. history. What he did know was that the only thing that mattered was how he was going to break out of the place. So I think that's a good way to start. Yeah. So he ended up at Alcatraz ultimately over a murder and a holdup um, at a gas station and he was you know caught tried and sentenced to life and he eventually ended up at Granite Reformatory Fort excuse me Reformatory First Mm -hmm. and um, he broke out of there but they caught him and they gave him 99 years at Alcatraz so He ends up at Alcatraz, and in May of 46, I believe it was, he he participated in the Battle of Alcatraz. I know I called it the massacre before. Sorry about that. I meant the Battle of Alcatraz, like you mentioned. And it was really a botched arm insurrection. Now, something that he did that was interesting during that um, Battle of Alcatraz was that he refused to, after breaking out with a few fellow inmates, he refused to shoot and kill any of the guards. And I think that's really what earned him some of the respect of some of the top prisoners at Alcatraz moving forward, uh, because the other assailants were either uh, killed or gassed to death. Um, But he was uh, allowed to live because he refused to kill any of the prisoners at the um, Battle of Alcatraz. So basically, you know, they broke out, got some guns and fought the, um, you know, officers there. 
And I believe he got seven years in isolation, though, after this, but still was allowed to live. And I'm not exactly sure when, but he, he, I'm sure he met Al Capone. The story goes that he played chess with Birdman Stroud and Bumpy Johnson, and he became a very good friend of the infamous Whitey Bulger. And in fact, uh, the Choctaw Kid wrote a Bumpy Johnson biography, but it's never surfaced. I think it died with him. That would be something that I would <laughs> love to get my hands on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And apparently, allegedly, uh, Birdman Stroud taught him how to play chess. And he was very close to Whitey Bulger, as I said, that um, when Carnes died, I believe it was in 88, um, they kind of buried him disrespectfully. You know, in I, I think they buried him in like Kansas or something like that, just randomly without any, you know, mm-hmm. uh, prop. It wasn't proper. And when when uh, Whitey Bulger found this out, he actually had his body buried, or excuse me, un dug up and um, transferred over to uh, the Choctaw grounds in Oklahoma with a proper burial. And he bought him like a four thousand dollar casket, and you know was there with his other immediate family, and that was it. So that's how close Whitey Bulger was. Now, something that always gets me, being a huge Bumpy Johnson uh, studier and fan, was that he he had some, as you as I mentioned, he was he had some uh, he had a really great relationship with Bumpy Johnson. He knew him very well, knew him well enough to write his story. Um, and legend has it that the quote unquote bosses of Alcatraz really, they were the only ones that were allowed to sit at like the top of the, I want to say they were like a bleacher section in the yard because mm-hmm. they were allowed yep. to, I know that's you know, they, yeah. were, they were the only ones allowed to, you know, sit up there and, and get the view of the Bay Area and the, the skyline and all that. But you one of those every once in a while on those days you might catch you might have caught the Choctaw kid and Bumpy Johnson playing chess so that shows you how well respected the Choctaw kid was um, I, I believe he was a very intelligent man too um, avid reader and stuff like that um, and then he eventually ended up at a halfway house in Kansas City and uh, I believe he broke parole and he went back to prison um in Springfield, uh, Missouri, and then that's he died there of AIDS in '88. Um, but yeah, definitely a fascinating character who, you know, touched base with pretty much all of the legends at Alcatraz. Um, and they say too there that he, when the when those brothers escaped, or we don't know for sure if they escaped, was it the Anglin brothers, right? Um, that he received a letter from one of them telling them that telling him that they made it out. Um, so he always believed nice. that. Yeah, he always said that they that they made it out and actually broke free for sure and weren't killed. Um, so that's pretty. That by, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. He claimed he got a letter from them, and he said I think he also might have helped them plan it out too with a few other guys. <laughs> 